Hi, this is Patrick Brunel from Brilliant Directories. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the six golden rules of membership features. Understanding these six golden rules will save you a lot of time in getting started with Brilliant Directories. So let's get started. The first golden rule is to never create a page with a duplicate URL. Let me show you what I mean. On this website, I'm trying to call a video that was added by my members. As I can see, it says slash videos in the URL, yet I'm not seeing any of the videos that were added. The reason for this is that all of your membership features already come with a page dedicated for them. So if I create a second page with the same URL, there's going to be a conflict. So let's go into the admin and see what I'm talking about. We're going to go to the membership features section, and you'll see each one has a permalink. So in this case, the permalink is already created for videos. However, when I go to content and I go to edit web pages and I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that there's also a page that was created for slash videos. This is why there's a conflict. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to delete the custom page that you created with the same URL. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page that we were just on. And we're going to see that we're not getting the full functionality that we want either. Perhaps what I've done is I've customized the feature, which has broken the default functionality, which takes us to the second golden rule. If you've customized the feature and broken it, try restoring the default code to see if that resolves the issue. In order to do that, we're going to go back to the member features section in the admin. And we're going to look for the video feature, which we have here. So I'm going to click on Edit. And in the search result design settings, which is in fact what is not working, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see an option here to restore the default code. There's a disclaimer that says if I restore it, of course my custom code is lost. So I'll select the feature that I want to restore from, of course, videos, because it's a video feature, and I'm going to click on Restore Default Code. Yes, I understand. And as always, what I'll want to do in the Developers tab in the Admin is I'm going to want to refresh the cache so that these changes take effect. And we're going to go refresh the page we were on and see if it fixes what, what, what was not working. So what I'll do is refresh the page and see if that resolved the issue for us. And there we have it. It's working as it should. The proper grid views, all the default functionality has returned. Golden rule number three, if you customize the form for a membership feature, you're going to have to call the custom variable for it to display on the front end of the website. Let's go to a membership feature to show you what we mean. In this example, we'll say that we want to edit the coupons feature. And we want to add an additional feature to the form itself. What we want to do is we want to identify what form is being used. So in this case, it is the coupons fields form. So now we can go to the form manager. We can search for the coupons form itself. As you can see, we can add unlimited fields, but just because I add a new field, does not mean that it's going to show on the front end of the website, which means there's some additional work needed in order to complete this. So we have the new field added here, it's in the form, but if I want this to display on my coupons feature, I'm going to need to go to the member feature itself. And I'm going to have to add that code on the deep detail page layout because this variable does not exist in the layout of this feature. So I need to call that variable. Of course, there's some coding needed to do this. If I want that custom variable to show in the search result layout, I'm going to want to go to the page loop of search results and call that custom variable as well. The same goes for if I want it to display in the profile page loop, I'm going to have to go to the profile page loop and call that custom variable. So that's an important golden rule to remember. 
Golden rule number four, understanding how to restrict access for both the public and your members can go a long way for your business. So let me show you some of the options that you have available to you that you may not realize you have. We're going to go to the coupons feature once again, and I want to show you a setting that could be easily missed, but that's very powerful. That setting is always show content. The moment that you select this to be no means that all of the coupons will be invisible to the public and it will require people to log in to access it. You'll be able to control which members can view it by going to membership levels, clicking edit, going to the features tab, and checking the box for coupons that says that they can view. This is how you control who can view a feature content that you've set to always display no. This is extremely valuable if you have premium content. Maybe you have special offers for your members. Maybe you have a special blog just for your members. So that's one of the settings that's very helpful. Of course, the other setting being that you can easily control which membership tier can post articles which ones can post coupons, as well as how many they can post. This is a lifetime limit. It's not a monthly limit. That's a question that we get often just for you to know. Golden rule number five, feature categories are not the same as your member categories. This is a question we get a lot. And again, to better explain, we're going to go to the admin of your website, to the membership features section. So in order to customize the category of a membership feature, we need to customize the form of that feature. Feature categories are not linked to member categories. So if I want to add a category to the coupons feature, I need to locate the form inside of the form manager. And here when I scroll down, I'm going to find the category section. And I can add categories in this box, or I can remove categories in this box. This is where you control the categories of your feature posts for properties, classified coupons, and so forth. You do not do it in the member category section, which is also located in the toolbox. This is completely separate from your feature categories. And our final golden rule for membership features is it's always easier to repurpose than to recreate. I thought the easiest way to explain this to you is to show you one of the websites that I've worked on. This is a language school website. And essentially, instead of creating custom features from scratch, what I did is I looked to see what features are already in the system. So for example, the events feature, I renamed courses, the The coupons feature I, I, I called excursions. The member blog, I called it the Q&A section, my video testimonials, and so forth. So I'm not creating features from scratch. I'm identifying what features are available out of the box, and what could I rename them? So when we go to the admin, and we see all of these features, perhaps I don't want to use a classifieds feature. Perhaps I'm going to want to call this feature cars. All I need to do is change the name here, change the URL permalink, the profile page title, the search results title, and that's it. When I save this, I now have a feature called cars. I can go to the same form as before, which in this case would be the classifieds form, and I can change the fields, and I'll now have a feature called cars. This is much quicker and much easier than creating a category from scratch. I hope that you found these rules helpful, and I certainly look forward to seeing you in the next video.